Have you ever seen someone and instinctively your first reaction is, I want to punch that guy in the face as hard as I can. I want to grab him by the back of the neck and just go... <laughs> well, a guy I discovered today happens to give me those exact vibes. This guy wishes and hopes one day to be like Andrew Tate, but he has zero of the charisma. He doesn't have any personal accomplishments other than the ones he's lied about. And unlike Andrew Tate, who I'm also not the biggest fan of, but at least Andrew Tate tells his people to go to the gym, take care of their body, look out for themselves. This idiot tells people not to go to the gym, says it's a waste of time, but instead they should be giving him money and buying his courses because he can save them from the Matrix as... For some reason, this Matrix talk has gotten so much traction, I'm like, bro, it's based off a movie. It's not real. People are just saying it now because it gets clout for whatever reason. But this idiot in question, whose hairline looks like the Pepsi logo, is just one of the most infuriating people I've seen in a very long time. He's built like a twig on a good day and like a toothpick on a bad day. Like He's so skinny, I could literally just... And he'd go flying 30 feet, no problem. And the videos he makes on his social media are just absolutely infuriating. Every single clip I saw just absolutely made me want to bash my head against the wall over and over again. I wanted to put an earplug so I could stop his voice from entering my brain. But I had to endure the cringe and the negativity and the anger that came from watching this guy because I had to review this guy's channel. I was at this point interested to the point I was willing to take damage myself to see what this guy was about. So this idiot right here, his name is the Jason Wojo. I mean, that's his shortened last name. It should be the Jason Bozo, to be fair. But his last name is actually Wojciechowicz? Wojciechowicz? Yeah. Right away, when you look at this guy's Instagram bio, you can tell... He is a big, 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 big time liar. He calls himself 30 under 30 and featured an entrepreneur. So right here, he's kind of insinuating that he was 30 for 30 by Entrepreneur Magazine. Now, Entrepreneur Magazine does not have 30 under 30 rankings. That's a thing that Forbes Magazine has. But one Google search later, which I did do, and we can actually do it right now together in real time. What was his name? Jason, well, yeah, right there. Jason Wojcicowicz, 30 under 30. It says here on our Instagram post that this guy was nominated for a 30 under 30 by the New York Weekly, which doesn't even have anywhere near the same credentials that Forbes magazine would have. So right there, it's completely misleading right away. And that's just the start because, oh my God, this guy is... One of the biggest fucking scammers I've seen in a very long time. He is just a wannabe Andrew Tate, but he looks like a walking stick. I mean, he's built... Look at this guy. He skipped leg day every day. The only exercise his legs get is when he walks. And of course, he's posing next to a McLaren, making himself look like a friggin' top G, as if he has all the money in the world. And here's his, you know, his sob story. His thing that he probably took so long to write. I'm not going to even bother reading it. And you can see the comments, by the way. Why would you buy a car that depreciates so fast? Almost worse than just burning the money. This guy is banned from TikTok, by the way. Why? Because of all the scams he's ran and so many people he's ripped off. Let's look at some of his Instagram Reels clips and see the advice that he actually gives us book in one day and here's how i did it i went all voice did he, just, so wait, I, did he just say he wrote a book in one day i wrote a book in one day and here's how i did it i went all voice so i used quicktime player i recorded voice memos of me talking through the chapters and then i use this app called TurboScribe that transcribes the audio for me for free and then i put those transcriptions into a google doc and then i sent it off to someone on fiverr who does grammar checking for 500 bucks and that book is about to be ready to go for 2024. i wrote a so he literally what he did he opened a friggin' voice memo, essentially. He talked, and he sent it to a guy. And that's him writing a book. That's so 
inaccurate. I mean, do you want to read a book that took a day to write, first off? That's not the kind of book I want to read. It probably is going to have nothing valuable at all. But Walking Stick here doesn't think that way. How many followers does this guy have? 968,000. How many are bought, I wonder? I made $130,000 extra last month because I call my leads within five minutes. I don't care if you're a coach, consultant, service provider, e-com store, it doesn't matter. Every single lead you get, every single book call, every single webinar opt-in, every single VSL opt-in, every single free lead magnet, whatever you're acquiring as a lead, as soon as they hit your CRM, have an automation that gets your setter or closer to call them within five minutes, you're gonna make more money. If you wait between five minutes and 15 minutes, your chance of closing them or booking a call goes down by 80%. So take that one tip and start making more money from the same exact lead you're already getting. I made $130,000. Oh bro. So he literally saying because he called his clients within the first five minutes, he made 130 more grand. Do you believe someone who's got a hairline like this? It's literally like the like a yin yang. It's like boom, boom. I'm trying to think of like some other hairline jokes to make right now. Chat, you got any good hairline jokes for this guy? Please, this guy, don't go bald though. You don't deserve to be bald. The number one way that I reduced my stress was by buying a boat. And it's not a flight to <laughs> walk, but having a boat allows me to go out. There's no Wi-Fi, there's no internet, there's no one that can bother me, and I can go out on the water and just think more clearly, have more clarity around my decisions. Listen to the music that I want to listen to without my phone being interrupted, without someone calling me, without some notification bothering me, disturbing me. So being out on the water helped me out a ton. Also taking night drives. At night, oh. I'll take the car out, oh put God. it on airplane mode, listen to music, but not have have the audacity to get distracted. Taking a night drive without the sun being in my face, without it being really warm out, allows me to relax because no one's gonna bother me at 11 o'clock at night. So getting a boat, being on the water, and having night drives allowed me to reduce my stress drastically. The number one- Yes, because <laughs> that's honestly friggin' hilarious. He literally said absolutely nothing in this entire clip. I was stressed out, I bought a boat, the stress went away. Mm -hmm. You should buy a boat too. How do you buy a boat? Well, you book a call with me and you pay me a lot of money and I'll, and I'll find a way for you to buy a boat. That's what he says. But actually what he's doing is you give him the money and he's going to go buy a second boat. He's saying like, he's talking like if driving a car at night without your phone or with your phone being on, do not disturb, is this new invention that no one knows about. Dude, I do that all the time. I, mean, I, did, I did, I did, at least I did when I had a car. I would drive at night. It's definitely stress relieving. I agree. You can walk too. You don't need to drive. You can release stress that way. You don't need to buy a boat to have no stress, you idiot. I mean, man, we're actually listening to a toothpick talk right now, bro. But back to the hairline jokes. Real quick, because we got some people now giving some advice. I wrote a book. So this hairline right here. Bro's hairline is the reason why death threats exist. Okay, the chat's coming off strong with this one. Bro can have dinner on its head. It's so flat. <laughs> Looks like a drunk driver made his hairline. Bro's hairline is built like the Hot Wheels half loop. <laughs> That's really good. I like that one. <laughs> his head looks like the Pepsi logo. <laughs> Wait, 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 we gotta see this. <laughs> Look at this, yo. Oh, this dip right here. <laughs> oh, God. Y'all are savage with it, man. I love it. I love it. So, guys, um, yeah, you wanna get stress out of your life? Buy a boat. There's no other way to release stress. But let's keep going because, man, this guy is just. Talking amazing stuff. <clears throat> if you're trying to make money online, hit your first 10K month. Don't start an SMA. Don't start an e-com store. Do sales. If you're able to close people on the phone and get 15%, 20% commissions on high ticket products that are already selling, that's the lowest hanging fruit to actually make money. If you're good at talking to people and you have a good personality, you have a good tonality, you speak with confidence, go get a sales job. These are leads that these entrepreneurs and business owners are pushing you that are ready to buy already. All you have to do is finish the layout. So if you're trying to make 10K a month, don't do all these shiny Bro, objects. So two Toothpick here is telling you not to work in Shopify, but instead go work in sales. It's like, wait, isn't Shopify on sales? Yes, it is. But he's hoping to get the people who are so dumb and so stupid 
they would pay him money and they wouldn't even see that as a major red flag. And you can see from here, by the way, I guess he didn't have uh, any bot comments or any bots here in this section because there is very few engagement here. So there you go. That's probably what his engagement actually looks like. I have to guess five comments in a week post that was a week ago. How many views are his reels getting? 9,000, 300,000. He's getting a lot less than me. Yeah, and I have a hundred like 103,000 followers. He's got almost a million and he's getting less views than me. So it just, you know, it shows something. But man, this guy's advice is amazing. <laughs> what else we got? Come on, Wojo, Wojo, Wojo Bozo. What else we got? Who actually gives this guy money to come talk? Bro, if I was in any kind of conference and this guy came out to talk, I would walk out. I'd be like, give me my money back right now. Right now. You guys scam me. This guy, by the way, this guy is two years younger than me. He's 26. Of course, he's got to give his talks from inside his sports car here, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be legit. So, a lot of people ask me, how much does it cost to own a McLaren GT? So, we're going to go through the expenses real quick. Mm. So, first off, I get 9 miles a gallon if I'm lucky. Right now, I'm at 12 miles a gallon, but usually you get about 9. So, gas every week is about 200 bucks a week. Um, on top of that, I need at least two to $3,000 a month in, like, repairs and maintenance. I just had my windshield wiper, uh, the windshield wipers, they broke. And that was eleven thousand six hundred dollars. Two to three grand a month in repairs, bro. What are you doing with that car? <laughs> I mean, even if I believed him that he said he has a McLaren, he doesn't. He's either renting this car and then he filmed like ten of these videos in a row, or he's just borrowing it from a friend, bro. If you're spending two to three thousand dollars a month in car repairs, you are a shit driver, and you need to friggin' go back to school, honestly for windshield wipers and i don't even think they're that valuable um, of course not transmission or an engine is going to be about 80 grand with a six to eight month wait time um oil changes are four thousand dollars oh, he's just throwing numbers out of the air oh by the way yeah see i was right here's why look every single one of these car videos that he's made here's why you he's wearing the exact same thing a movie and look the exact same clothes he's got Women on. Don't just want so a guy who had he probably muscles. rented this car, filmed all this content, all these talking points, and then returned it. There was a video here. Women. Okay, let's Here's see. Here's why you have to stop taking women out to dinner and a movie and maybe a walk. Those yeah. three things right now, to be quite honest with you, are boring as fuck. No one wants to do that anymore. Last date that I went on, you have to make the person kind of follow you because you're the leader in, the, in any relationship. You're the guy. You're supposed to be the leader. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to the casino. You can fucking join us if you want. You know, like, I'm not going to do this crazy itinerary for what a date or meeting somebody new should be. If they want to follow you as the leader, then they will join you where you want to go. The problem with most guys is they get a date. They're talking to some chick on Tinder. They're sitting there going, okay, yeah, dinner. We'll, we'll, we'll go here at 7, and then we'll go here at 8, and then we'll go here. We'll take a walk, and then, like, you know, like, like, if it's a good fit, this is not a sales call, motherfucker. Okay, you have to play the leading role. Here's why He's you trying so hard to be Andrew Tate. Oh my god, it's pathetic. So apparently, taking a woman out to you know a movie, a date, and like dinner is a bad thing. But you gotta take her, you gotta take her to the casino. Yeah, that's a better date. <laughs> Bro, a casino is like probably the worst place to go on a first date. I can. There are a few worse places to go on a first date. Maybe a strip club is worse. A nightclub is probably worse. But a casino is definitely up there as one of the worst things. You don't go to the gym. What? I did at my gym video. And it's kind of funny because if you go to any gym and you ask anybody, like, how many hours a day are you using to be here? They're taking up two to three hours of their morning with showering, eating, working out. You know, maybe they meet their friends at the gym. They're doing all these things for three hours and they wonder why they're not getting as much stuff done in their business. They're not getting to where they want to be. It's because they're using all their time doing that in the morning. And that kind of sets the precedent for the day. 
And everybody can argue that going to the gym is good for you, mindfulness, all that stuff. I get that. But if you can't internally find out why you're motivated, hence why people like me and other big CEOs and founders are skinny and don't go to the gym and we're still successful, it completely debunks the theory that the gym is the only thing that's supposed to make you centralized and mindful of your progress. A lot of people... This guy just is just, just spitting out a bunch of words. Apparently going to the gym is a waste of time. So even Andrew Tate doesn't say that. Andrew Tate says you need to be working out a lot. You know, and this guy is just an idiot. He's just pulling words out of his ass. Freaking stupid, man. Just, oh my God. He's trying to stay relevant in any way that he can. When my video blew up about how going to the gym is stupid, the internet went crazy. People freaked out. They were like, oh my God, this kid's skinny. Like, why is he talking shit about the gym? And here's the brutal truth. If you take a man, okay, and you strip him of all that he has, right? All of his personality traits, his qualities, his personality, and you just have a guy with just muscles. Tell me how valuable that is. Because a guy who's always trying to fix himself means that he comes from a place of insecurity. If I feel like my body is gonna make me a better person or allow me to be seen as a higher authority, that means you've had traumas that you haven't gone past. And people always ask me, why don't you go? I don't give a fuck. When my Wojo Bozo, so you shouldn't go to the gym because if all your clothes get taken away and you're naked, all you got left is muscles. So don't go to the gym. Because mm -hmm. when you because when you got to fix yourself, it's not good for you. Oh my god, man! Oh my god, Jesus Christ! I mean, I don't know how many brain cells I'm losing this stream just by listening to this idiot talk. Oh my god, bro! Working out is one of the best things anyone can do for themselves. Anyone, anyone, if someone tells you you shouldn't go to the gym, they're an idiot. And no matter what else they say, you got to take it, take it with a grain of salt because they're probably lying to you. Oh my God. It's like, we're just going down. And this guy has been automating stuff for a very long time. Escape the matrix. Okay, here we go. Some true Andrew Tate stuff going on here. You are never going to escape the matrix and here is why. The 1% is the 1% for a reason. So if you're currently working a job or you currently just have a massive money block or limiting belief around money, you are not going to make more money and escape the matrix. A lot of people get stuck in that because of things that your parents told you, things that society tells you. You're valuing your bank account so much. You're not valuing high income skill sets that will forever set you free. So when people talk about escaping the matrix, they're simply talking about escaping all the systems and government policies that are in place. He literally said absolutely nothing in here. Provided no value about anything. Just talking. Matrix. Escape. Government. Bad stuff. This. Give me your money. Freaking Pepsi hairline dude over here. Oh, what should... Okay, this one. This is the most viral one I've seen so far. Let's watch this one too. 479,000 views. I don't know if you've ever seen that board where they got like the weeks and you mark off each week and that's how close you are to dying. Have you seen that shit before? It's like, okay, yeah, they, people have bought this thing. I'm like, bro, if you buy that shit, you are sick in the head. Yeah. Like you leave this thing up and every single week you mark it off. And I'm like, bro, why would I ever want to mark off how close I am to dying? Yeah. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen that. If that got 479,000 views, that shows how bad the algorithm really is because that was horrible. Oh, God. So, walking stick man. It's taking me too long to scroll back up. A walking stick man. He's got McLaren. I just noticed that. He's got McLaren GT and Bentley SUV in his bio. You know, what kind of... Yeah. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, man. Guys, this is just... Honestly, here's some advice for you guys. At this point, I really do think... Even internet gurus and these fake dudes have gotten lazier. I remember... In like early to mid 2010s, there was Ty Lopez, there was Grant Cardone, who's still around, um, Anik Single, I think was his name. There was a lot of other fake gurus, you know, like here in my garage video, those idiots were around. And they actually put effort into scamming people, I will say. They did. But this idiot puts no effort into anything. You know, those guys actually had big-time conferences. Oh, there was a guy named Dan Locke, who was a piece of shit. Uh, but, hey, even he actually he actually 
presented himself as somewhat of a respectable human. This guy doesn't. He says, don't work out. I mean, he's built like a friggin' walking stick on a good day and a toothpick on a normal day. Like, come on, bro. Like, what is these little skinny limp noodle arms? I could literally flick this guy if he got in my face. Just ding! And he goes away and he flies like 20 feet. Ugh. Just don't listen to people like this. They're literally getting... They're paying people. They're paying journalists and reporters to write about them and saying they have social proof they have these podcasts that they host and they're saying that and they're all they're doing is they're automating these podcasts and going into cars renting it and filming all their videos you know it's just it's freaking stupid man Making it rain There's dollars. There's people who don't make any money, who are 18 to 21, deciding to have children. I'm sorry to tell you this, but that's an idiotic choice. You can't provide for the that's child. Like, people do things every... Anyway. And let's cap it off with this. So there's a, another tab here. When I searched up his name, by the way, this came up. Yeah, this is, is one of the first things that comes up when you search up uh, Jason Wojo's name. And it's three controversies about him. And so let's read here his, what his editor had to say about that. One star review. Have been working for Vojo for the past three to four months as a video editor. And there are 15 to 16 editors which Vojo hired. First two months were good. But after that, he used all of us to grow his IG, TikTok, and YouTube. And which happened, but he didn't pay all of us for two months. And now he's not replying to anybody. Of us and have been blocked us. So this person here doesn't speak English that well, but we're getting the message across either way. So please be aware of this fraud Wojo who calls himself a multimillionaire, which he's not. If anybody knows him, tell him to pay us. So he just going on Fiverr, probably hiring people from Bangladesh, India, Philippines, where the labor is so low, like maybe five to seven dollars for an editor. And he hired to 15 to 16 of those and he didn't pay them. And he got away with it because it's possible. It is very possible to do things like that. And that's just, I mean, if you're not paying your own team members and you need 15 to 16 editors, that's a lot of editors, no matter who you are. You don't need that many editors ever. <laughs> oh, and this is talking about why his followers are bought because apparently a lot of the uh, comments in his videos look like this. And we went through some of them. I didn't see these, but I believe it too. And here are the... Oh, YouTuber Marky also exposed a list of Jason Wojo fan accounts after it was sent to him by Jason's disgruntled editors. So these are his fan accounts, apparently. He's got fan accounts made. Wow, that's why. So he's literally copying Andrew Tate to a T. He's just making fan accounts, trying to get his name out there more. You know, freaking moron. They explained that Wojo Media used freelancers for its marketing using a now-deleted Discord group. Jason would upload raw videos on the group and any editor can take and edit this video and post them on their sites. They get paid based on the views their video makes. Wow. Again, taking a page from Andrew Tate's book. So... He was paying his editors, supposedly paying them, at least was going to pay them. He, we know he didn't pay them. But if he had paid them, the agreement was five bucks a video. That's horrible. That's like scam level horrible. If it gets 3.5k views, an extra five dollars. Wow. And if you get over, if the video you edit gets over a million views, you get an extra $75. Oh my God, bro. This guy is horrible, man. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Ugh. Yeah, this guy. Who was Jason Bojo? Never trust the guy with a with a friggin' Pepsi hairline. Ugh. Friggin' scammers, bro. They piss me off.